part of the reason I'm so grateful for this space and part of the reason I'm so grateful for the challenging and difficulty in uh, learning of this room is because I feel a shared yearning of we need to do this better. We need to do this well. Um, and, I, and I just love the disagreements in this room. <laughs> uh, raise your hand if you disagreed with something that you heard or just like weren't sure about something that you heard yesterday. <laughs> Me too. Um, and I think that that's great. It's because we don't, we don't know the answer. I, I'm sorry, <laughs> we don't. Um, it, this wasn't handed down from God to us to tell you blah, blah, blah. We're experimenting. We come from experiments. We come from experience. We're doing study. We're studying with you. Um, and we really, really want this shit to work. Um, and we need all of us to be experimenting together. So I'm super grateful for this room. So that's my messy version of that story. Um, so in, in um, that vein, um, I'm also a very, <laughs> I got an awesome feedback about my, the way that I communicate yesterday. I'm a very like direct, serious person and I care a lot about like rigor. And maybe it was because I was a ballet dancer for like 12 years, but I'm like, we have to be really rigorous in our training. So I'm gonna be pretty um, tough on this first section. I'm gonna make you really work. Um, uh, so don't hate me or hate me and then like do really good work. I don't know, that's fine too. Um, so we're gonna work really hard. Can I get a yes? Yes, yes for work? Yes. Okay. <laughs> How do I do the next thing? Scavenger hunt. <laughs> Okay, we are going to practice self-organizing. We're going to practice doing the work of the world, scavenger hunt. This is very difficult scavenger hunt, and you only have 15 minutes to complete it. You must find, and just to like lay out the rules, um, please don't go in the kitchen. You can go in any of these rooms, baby nursery, toddler nursery, trainer room, not the church office, and you can go outside. Three hats, one blade of grass from the round park nearby. You must tell me the name of the round park when you return. One large wicker basket, 20 paper cranes, a list of the facilitator's middle names, 31 shoes, one soccer ball, one plastic tomato, names and addresses of five community movement spaces, drawing of the three hats, 15 tiny chairs, one rock, something cool, this is completely subjective and I am the judge, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the final bit is a song or a chant. There are some rules about this song or chant. It must be accompanied by piano and drums, it must use five languages, and it doesn't have to be every part is translated in five languages, just at some point it must use five languages. The names of the items found or made and the people who found or made them need to fit somewhere in this chant song. But the person doing the chanting, naming, singing of each of these items cannot have seen the finder or maker with the item. <coughs> is that clear? A ask me a question. <laughs> so if I'm doing this song about, you know, Henry found the plastic tomato, I cannot have seen Henry with the plastic tomato. Does that make sense? There, yes, someone, there must be some way of meeting these goals, whether through communication or complicated blindfold systems, whatever. If you, if you also see some kind of loophole in this that you want to exploit, be my guest. Seriously. <laughs> so this is a lot. This is going to be really hard. Has anyone ever like run a direct action or a strike, like a day-long strike with your workers or a canvas, something like that, really hard? 
this feels like, right? Okay, I think this is possible. Ready and go. Create the, the needs that we need to make them a role. And therefore, everybody's feeling a role. And everybody's participating. Exactly. You should just stand up and, and talk about that. I think it's what I was imagining like right after today's bank call. Five minutes left! Five minutes left! Five! Debrief, aka what the fuck just happened? So literally what just happened? Who can describe to me how all of that stuff somehow got done in, I will also be honest, 13 minutes? How, how, literally how did it happen? Who did what? Yeah, I felt really clearly that people went immediately to their passion and where they thought they would be most useful. How did that happen? Just literally, like where people like, I'm gonna do this, or people just went to it, or what happened? Yeah. Um, both at once, I think. Like people started to go towards things, and then um, to be sure that like everyone wasn't doing the same thing at once. We had a lot of people like come together and decide to make a list. Um, mm -hmm. And then like a lot of people had that same idea, so they all and we all ended up gathering around the same list. Um, but so those were like some unnamed people in the songs that were really clear um, um. about like getting the chord. That was my next. That was my next question. Who did work that wasn't named in the song? Raise your hand. Uh, just to be clear, this is a metaphor for life. Does that happen? It's like some people's work doesn't get like the shout out on the whatever. You don't see it on Twitter. It doesn't get recognized, and you're not the hero of the day. Okay. Being clear. Yeah. Something else I saw was the trust it was in there. Like people are like just the we they swung to like their passion. Mm -hmm. And so the people that was not doing it's like, okay, so they just like automatically feel that trust, like, okay, they got it. You know, for example, like the song, I was like, Oh, they they would just went, I was like, Okay, they got it. So it's like that trust that I've created yeah. to like mm -hmm. from there and like one was the was their uh, passion that dragged them through that. Mm -hmm. And the other one of the other people that didn't go there is like, no, no, oh, because of their passion, they would do a good job. They were like, trusting that. It's like, yeah. Did other people experience that? Of like, I see that's happening, they got it, I don't need to interject. Feels good, right? Has anyone had the opposite experience of like, I see something happening over there, I'm really busy, but I have to be there or something might go wrong? I've never done that. <laughs> anyone else? Yeah. Tim. I just really thought, like, we, you know, we talked a lot about trust last night, and I just really felt like that currency of trust was really critical. Like, if we hadn't spent the time developing relationships, being vulnerable with each other, we wouldn't have been able to move as fast as we did without mm. bumping into each other or hurting feelings to a greater extent. Yeah. Um, I do also want to acknowledge. I think there was some confusion, like it, like it, like it in the beginning. Like Where? I really got to hand it to like Diego, like trying to like you know bring some organization to the whole thing. And I think in general, like people like just continue to sort of do what they were doing. And then it, it like probably took us like five minutes, but before all the list people were like, let's make one list, and then like the sort of self-organization sort of started to take over, but I, yeah. I don't even think in the beginning it was like a little um, chaotic and maybe like a little bit totally. confusing mm -hmm. um, until people really got into like the hang of it and like when people did take leadership in the different roles, like after a few minutes, I feel like things would have settled down. Mm. Mm. That is such a great observation. Yes, I definitely was seeing that because people were standing up and I'll do this and I'll do this and leadership, like where was leadership? Who was leading stuff? Like who, who, raise your hand if you feel like you were leading something. Oh really? Curious. Interesting. Uh, yeah. 
I want to go with you. So what was that like? Um, so I was like trying to read the list from the computer and get it on the things and like organize people to have names by mm -hmm. them and a bunch of other people were doing that as well. Um, I, it didn't feel like we were like had an effective system. Um, so it was sort of like, it felt actually very similar, I was saying this to people, like m the movement that I work in, mm -hmm. where like things like sort of work out and then everyone's like excited and like celebrates at the end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get but, there. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, it, it, it was fine because I think people, I think that like trust people have been talking about actually did really feel true and it was sort of like things were going to work out mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah. 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 I just kind of want to say something. Uh, I feel that it was very reminiscent from a little bit of organizing. And for me, I guess one thing that somewhat, like, a little bit bothered me would say is that, like, we had the scavenger hunt there, but then it disappeared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, like, I wanted to help out, but I didn't know what to do because everything was split off. And for me, I felt like I could help, but everyone's already sort of went off to their own groups. So I feel mm -hmm. like at the same time, I can remember an organizer, like, oh, how can we bring more people into it? But then mm -hmm. if you don't have this object organization, then you're an mm -hmm. outsider by definition. And in the context of decentralization, how can we make sure we don't rec replicate the same structures that we're trying to not do? Totally. Mm -hmm. I see that resonating for people. Were there other folks who felt like they were kind of on the periphery, they didn't really know what they were doing or how to participate? Yeah. I'm seeing more hands for that than people who are identifying in leadership. That's interesting. Um, uh, other two more, yeah, Brittany. So it makes me um, like question many things, like um, in chaos or like um, the many different roles of support that we can have in the system. Where maybe I don't need to do anything, and maybe I just need to step back mm -hmm. and have that as a place of not being um, like a place of enabling myself, but mm -hmm. also recognizing that oh, maybe I can just be a is witnessing enough? Mm. Or what can I learn from this mm. in this moment? Because I had that moment of helping, but then I had this moment of just like looking and observing and taking in what these different people, their establishments of like, maybe I can use something from that. Mm. Or maybe, maybe it's not a moment that I'm supposed to be in leadership. Maybe it's just a, part, a, a moment of me learning or mm. something like that. So like, I'm thinking about how do we change these different types of roles where we feel like um, um, not in a net, like, uh, language is hard, but I think, like, the, the way that, how do we change these type of systems <coughs> of, like, maybe this is not for me, maybe, like, if we want to go with the universal, it, this activity made me think about, also, I'm, I know I'm speaking a lot, but I'm, no, no, like, no. it's <laughs> making me think about, like, um, the swarming and these type of things in those moments that, of the birds and mm -hmm. things, of, like, how, what that looked like of like them coming out, coming back together, coming mm -hmm. out, coming back together, but then that shift turning, all these different types of things of what, do everyone have to be actively engaged to, to make that a successful thing? So that's my question. Mm -hmm. like. That's a good question. I'll leave that in the room too. <laughs> Oh my God, so many. Okay, <laughs> I promise we're actually gonna do a much deeper debrief. This is just the preliminary debrief to get a little taste of like, that was amazing, we accomplished so much, we did it so quickly, people were really fluid. Also kind of I like got left out and didn't feel good all the time and communication was complicated. So again, it's a metaphor for, like has anyone experienced this basically? Yeah. So all of the things that I heard coming up around communication, around um, how do you engage people, around how does leadership actually work, around what's my role, all, all stuff that we're going to dig into a bit more. And thank you, James, for taking notes. Um, so first, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Oh, um, so I'm with a group called Movement Net Lab. We do similar kinds of study um, as the INE Institute, and we focus on this question of how does um, decentralization work? How do networked movements work? And we come out of a lot of places. We come out of um, Occupy, Occupy Sandy, out of the Black Lives Matter, Movement for Black Lives in New York, out of um, studying and learning from the Spanish Revolution, 
Um, but we started by trying to describe what it is that we were actually experiencing because from the outside, like much of this, uh, a lot of what we've been experiencing and learning looked like chaos. It just looked like a lot of stuff going on, but there's not really any kind of structure. And what we were trying to say is there's always a structure. There's always a structure. Maybe it's implicit. Maybe it's not that healthy. But maybe what we can do is try and study it and see what would make sense to make it more healthy. So we also wanted to look at what are the uh, structures that people usually work with and just make those things clear. So we also work with uh, one of our members is a really, really talented graphic designer named Gan, and he made these beautiful things. Um, so this is just, we're just going to go over shapes of things. This is the kind of idealized type of a traditional organization, right? There's decision-making, communication at the top, it flows down, maybe it flows back up. Um, and just to make it concrete, if you had run the scavenger hunt in this shape, what would that have looked like, basically? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean literally, what would have, what would have needed to happen? <laughs> so if there had been like one director, come, I am in the center, you do this, you do that, come back to me and tell me what happened, that kind of thing? Uh, coalition. People have some experience with this kind of shape. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, again, not always, but often, it's these kinds of shapes connected at probably close to the top. The people doing work towards the middle or bottom don't necessarily have a lot of control over what's being directed. They might not even work together in teams. It's still being directed up here. So again, to make it concrete, if you had run the scavenger hunt like a coalition, and not in like a shitty way, just like as a, in, as a shape of a coalition, what, what might that have looked like if it was in the pure form? Say it louder. Uh, meters of each task or whatever thing to find would be communicating together. Cool, yeah. So like each task has a leader, they direct the task, they come together and make decisions about who's doing the next task. Got it. <coughs> Email list. Who has experience with this shape? Um, so with an email list, you have one or some group at the center sending out a ton of information to a lot of people who are n probably not connected to each other and they might be soliciting information from the outside in as well but there's not a lot of coordination here again all of the um, activity um, direction comes from the center so trying to make it concrete again if we run the scavenger hunt like an email list what might that have looked like <laughs> yeah. Only 1% taking action? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yes. So literally, like, <laughs> some people getting directions and some people just being like, meh. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and then the similar related form is the online campaigning org. Anyone experience with this kind of shape? It's similar to this, but there maybe are, is a little bit more of team building out in the field. Um, it's maybe uh, a bigger group at the center um, who are con uh, interested in different areas. So maybe this person is interested in one or is running run one campaign and that's their email list and their campaigners and all that stuff. Anyone got experience with this? Cool. I'll, I'll just keep moving because I know I'm behind. Um, and then chapter organization. Anyone have experience with chapter organizations? Yeah? So um, describe this to me. If you had been running the um, scavenger hunt as a chapter organization, what, that might, what might that have looked like, shape-wise? groups trying to complete the list completely to like see who could do it best or first or something <laughs> oh man too true <laughs> ouch <laughs> I feel like we kind of did almost 
was in some ways trying to like chapter mm. organization like there where like everyone was in these different groups working on different mm -hmm. I guess it's a little bit different because like normally when we think of chapter organizations they're kind of doing the same thing but in different places mm -hmm. in this scenario we were doing different things based on what the need was mm -hmm. um, so maybe not actually and I would also say that chapters usually don't mix with other chapters. Like if you're in this chapter, you're probably in this chapter. You're not going to like all of a sudden join this chapter because of, you know, you're changing the thing that you're doing. Is that <coughs> probably right? But also like Lissy's sad, sad story from yesterday of like a lot of directive coming from here and then the point person being engaged with that directive, trying to build buy-in among this. That's, that's the shape. Um, so a shape that we're also going to talk a lot about, and I promise I will get more into it in a moment, is this shape, which you got teased about a little bit yesterday. Um, without me talking about it too much, what, what does that look like? What did you say again? Crazy. Crazy. Chaotic. And you might see a lot of the shapes that we just saw inside of the shape, but deeply connected. So looking at all of these different things, and we call this a decentralized, self-organized, smart network. I know we made an agreement about jargon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but decentralized, meaning there isn't one uh, direction setting space. Self-organized, meaning all these different clusters are kind of doing their own thing, and they don't, aren't taking direction in that way. And smart network, because that's what it was called in the book that we read. Yeah. There's just like something, I don't know, like kind of emotional coming up for me that like we keep sort of like feeling bad or like a sense of feeling bad that we had like hierarchy within the groups or like, oh, we really messed up because we kind of formed coalitions. But it occurs to me that like that is in a response to the nature of the task was that the nature of the task was to report something back to one person. So like the task de demanded <coughs> that there be a collection of information to the center. So I don't feel like we should feel bad for having had some like centralized structure. I just like feel in the room that we're kind of like, oh, we didn't make a totally decentralized self-organizing network. Gosh, we really messed up. And I just want to say like, <laughs> well, like, no, I, th I, I was like, we did that in 13 minutes. You know, like we were obviously super effective. Yeah. You know? No, no, no. The, the task isn't, so in some ways I actually expected um, from the, uh, so what is one thing that's really good about this kind of shape? Efficient. Say again. It's efficient. Efficient. When you have to get something done really quickly and move like information or something really quickly, a directive can sometimes be the most efficient way of making it happen. Um, if there's like a fire, this is not the time for us to be like, hey everybody, so let's like get into a circle and think about how we want it. It's actually really useful for someone to say, fire, get the fuck out of here right now. I know what I'm doing, listen to me. That's probably the right answer. Um, and I'm you know, making that a analogy, but it's not just about a fire. Like sometimes these things are really useful. There are, and I wanna be like, controversial here. I'm not against hierarchy. Whoa. Um, I'm against unaccountable hierarchy. And I'm against abusive hierarchy. But hierarchy in itself is all around us. It's also part of the natural formation of the world. Um, and so it's not intrinsically good or bad. It's ways of getting things done. Um, and so I also would not say that the goal is to be in this shape all the time. There are good things and bad things about being in this shape, but this is also a shape that we all have very little experience of doing intentionally, I would say, and there's not as much training on. Like, I can go to a training about this, 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 and this any day of the week. This is a little bit more mysterious and harder to grasp, and that's why we're focusing on it in this workshop. Does that make sense for people? Yeah. yeah. What, what, why do you have the lines and circles kind of spewing outside? Like, what does that represent? I'll, I'll get into that. We actually do a breakdown of each of those things. Um, so, like I was saying, each of these structures is good at some things, 
So for example, efficiency in this one, leadership is really clear. I would also say leadership development paths also often really clear. <laughs> um, online organizations, what's really great about them? Anybody can join. Hmm? Anybody, can join. Anybody can join. It's super easy to join. What else? What's really great? Massive scale. Massive scale. You can reach so many people with an online organization. I work at an online organization. We reach like 50 million people a week. That's ridiculous. We could not, I don't know if we could do that in this shape. Chapter organizations, what's great about them? What really, really works? Uh, like similar to the origin program, like adapting to local content. Totally. It, in the like, healthy form, it's responsive to these nodes, and these nodes are really particular and specific, right? What else? They are like, uh, united. They have, they're like united for like, the same cause. So the <gasps> unity, the totally. of unity is there within the chapter. Totally. They're probably all at some point working on the same, not just issue, but the same like campaign, right? And that's a lot of force directed. It's really powerful. Yeah. It's like you either are extremely replicable as being chapters. Mm -hmm. Totally. You could, instead of five, you could have a hundred. Yeah, that's the idea, right? Um, and then as we've seen in some of these network formations, uh, some of the stuff that can be good about it is a lot of things can get done. A lot of different people can initiate projects, you know, like this thing got done in 13 minutes and I would say that there were elements of like self-organizing that make, that are possible in these networks. And they're not good at other things. So we've gone over a lot of that, but just popcorn, one thing that an organization or coalition not so great at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> say louder. Dictatorship. Dictatorship. Online organizations, one thing maybe not so great at. Like no leadership development. No leadership development. Chapter organizations, one thing that's like, ugh. One upping. One upping, <coughs> yeah. Um, networks, something not so good at. Or these decentralized forms, not so good at. Clarity. Clarity, accountability, maybe. Uh, leadership development, sometimes, maybe. Communication sometimes difficult. Okay, we get it. It's not <laughs> <laughs> um, But also, though that's difficult, and also that's why we have to work so hard to make those things healthy. Um, and yeah, you got, you got these things. <laughs> <laughs>